Hey everyone, welcome to the fifth Chebcast, I think it is. Today we're discussing skeletons, and we're here with Seventh Outpost, It's Ghost UK, and hopefully So High for Hentai shows up soon. Yep. Hello everyone. Hello. So, to kick this off, I'd like to start out by talking about the properties of bone, because I think the properties of bone is an interesting topic for skeletons, because it's what they're made of and it offers some interesting properties, both advantageous properties and disadvantageous properties. So the first point about bone is it is about as strong as steel. Some people say it's slightly stronger actually, but it's about three times lighter. And this is a pretty remarkable thing. Yeah, bone is really tough to break because it's slightly bendable. It's similar to steel, of course, depending on the brand of the steel itself, of course. Uh, I'm just thinking, stronger steel but three times lighter. How, when you look at steel with how heavy it is, obviously, you know, it's 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 solid, it's quite heavy, yep. it's quite dense. When it comes when it comes to bone, people can very easily imagine, you know, hammering it, splitting it, breaking it. Yeah, the thing is, it's like steel has more given it, like... If you bend a bone past a certain point, it'll just shatter, but steel yeah. will just bend. That, and also, um, the thing about bone is that it's not like solid. Uh, bones are kind of like hollow on the inside yeah. because we have bone marrow in them. And That's and true. like the, the, the parts that's just solid bone just bone itself are not that as that big and as we age our bones become less and less elastic they, they become more and more mineralized which which makes the bones way more brittle that's why um old people are like, like their bones are very hard but they're also very brittle um when it comes when it comes to that what I'm curious to know is, when it comes to that, how would you go about reinforcing it? Um, I think the best way would be actually not to reinforce it, but to put stuff between it and whatever's striking it. Like, you yeah. could add padding and then a metal shell or something. The problem with applying something directly to the bone, like, you know, on D&D, there's like the, the metal plated bone or whatever. It's like if something strikes the, the metal, it's going to like deform the metal a bit and crush the bone underneath. Whereas if there's padding and like an, a shell, then it will just be absorbed by the, the shell and the padding and the bone will be fine. Mm. Okay. Um, another property about bone, which is quite interesting, is that it is less resistant to a precise strike because with steel, the steel will deform with the impact, like it'll dent or maybe it'll bend. Whereas bone... it, will abs it will absorb the impact. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas bone will tend to just shatter if the impact is too strong. Uh, I was I was gonna I was gonna say with by that then it's kind of like diamond in the sense where it's it's solid but can't take any pressure. Yeah, it's got like a strong compressive strength perhaps so like if you put like a lot of um force in terms of um god how do you describe this like you got a bone right and right. it's supporting an entire body that's standing on it kind of thing yeah, yeah but if you take that weight and you focus it into a little point like maybe a centimeter wide and then you apply that to the bone it'll be damaged by that so it's mm. like i hope that makes sense for necromancers then it could it be an idea for uh, necromancers to kind of figure out a way to not reinforce it but distribute the sh the shock like let's so, so say for example that you smack a skeleton yeah and it's just mm -hmm. fall to pieces because because you're smacking it with a warhammer or a sword or you're going to karate chop it with ha with hands harder than steel and whatnot um 
Well, if if that impact was to be distributed throughout the whole of it, and for that skeleton to, to absorb it s somehow, you gave me a great idea, by the way. Mm. Oh yeah, you could have like springs between the bones or something. So like you strike a skeleton, and like the the bone sort of pushes back into a spring system, which pushes back into other bones of other spring systems, and the whole impact gets kind of absorbed. Mm. Would that work? You can genetically modify the creature, or just like like feed them properly. Uh, but you can genetically modify creatures to have stronger bones. Because yeah. the reason why the bone is stronger than steel in, in some ways is because uh, it's essentially got like it, like, like like it has quite complex chemical and and like. Uh, and mineral structure and because of that uh, it's able to with kind of kind of deform in a slightly different manner that's why i believe that if if we if we like feed a person better and 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 uh potentially like modify a person or a creature uh genetically or or magically in a certain way that they will produce way stronger bones but i think that like the thing about bones, like we, we would need the biological component to actually produce them, yeah, form them. Um, harkening back to what we were talking about before, uh, some time ago with liches, uh, you could like you could have like a bone farm, like you could have like uh, far, you know, like uh, breeding uh, creatures or humans to have stronger bones. But uh, um, before I derail this. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> There is there is a bloke there is a bloke in the world. I can't remember his name. Um but he's basically if I remember correctly, his his skull is like twice as thick as a normal human's. And yes. I think it, I know it's, what you're it's, talking about. Yeah, he's he's been headbutting things so much he's got like an impression on his forehead. <laughs> like Shit. and because because his skull's that thick, like he would just smash his head against things and the the things he's smashing his head against, of course, will break. And he says that he first discovered this when he was uh, roughhousing with his uh, brother, and he accidentally put a hole through a door with his head, and he was fine. Shit, as you, as you do. <laughs> yeah. So if so, if you if you take that and you apply that to every bone, then we've we've we've, we've gone from Skyrim skeletons to Oblivion skeletons. Yeah, it's <laughs> a good point. Um, one other thing about uh, the various materials is like, I feel that uh, bone is kind of like directly in the middle between wood and steel because you know like wood is also rigid but it's much softer and it will bend probably more than bone but wood will also snap at a point and steel mm -hmm. won't snap it'll probably bend the whole way around depending on what it's like in terms of alloys and whether it's been hardened or whatever so i think uh the thing, the thing with, uh, sorry to cut you off. Uh, do, you, okay. do you want to continue? I was just going to say, so I think wood would be a good um, reinforcement tool for bone. Mm. Um, I was going to say with wood. What about when it rots? Because yeah, like like, like you, you look at wooden stuff that's left outside for so many years, it it can get rotted. It can get you know stuff growing in it. It is susceptible to treat like a small yeah. insect and whatnot pecking it and eating it. It's kind of like how much are you willing to work on each skeleton you raise? I mean, yeah. wood can be m definitely cheaper, absolutely, and yeah. it can also it can also be very cost effective because you can you can even have the skeletons doing all the hard work. It's also low how tech. Many, like like how many skeletons? How many more skeletons could you like dig out? How many more corpses could you dig out in the time that it takes you to reinforce a single skeleton? You know? Mm. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the whole quantity versus quality argument. Yeah. That tends that tends to be a common occurrence when it comes to necromancers in an undead in fantasy, doesn't it? It tends to be the case where a very big scary thing about them. I mean, you can see this with Game of Thrones is that it's not the individual one that's the scary thing. It's more the case where there's dozens upon dozens of them. There's droves upon droves of them. Yep. Yep. Because because yeah. because it's like when it when it comes to people, people uh, you can have a set population of like two, let's say you got two hundred fifty thousand people in one area. When it comes to dead people, though, dead people that have been dead for years and will continue and will continue to be dead, and you'll have dead more dead people every single year. So you can have, say, in a hundred years, you can have, oof, what more? 
Take I, I really into account that like the corpses do decay, even yeah, yeah. Have... So, uh, what is? Do we not actually know the rate of decay when it comes to bones? I don't know. That depends on where they are. In the earth, it's like years. You know, it's like, t but it's like usually like decades, two decades, three, sometimes, sometimes more. But like, yeah, it it, it takes usually decades. Of course, depending on on what kind of soil it is and like yeah, yeah. how much. Do you expose them to the elements? I'm pretty sure that if you dig a corpse, you know, in, put a corpse in the earth and just leave it there, it's going to be gone relatively soon. Mm. I know um, that rodents chew on the bones if they're not underground. Scave would have good nibble on bone bones, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, and that, and that can, of course, attribute to, like, if you get a skeleton up and it's covered in gnawing and bite marks, that's not really going to be too good, is it? No. Um, something I kind of want to bring up when it comes to, um, like, bones and whatnot. Obviously, when somebody is dead, yeah, like, they're buried, the um, the bacteria in the stomach, the stomach acids will eat, and, and bacteria in general, will just eat away at the body and just, uh, over time, will gradually strip them to bone. When it comes to preserving bodies, because you have like different things for different things to preserve bodies, um, could there not be something to do that with bones? I think for sure there would be. Like, um, I know that some bones can be polished. That gives them like kind of a waxy coating that's protective. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was thinking like either polish them or like you know you know when you've um, painted something or, or and you've got and you've got like an, an overcoat on it or an undercoat on it. Yeah. Like, like you could slather that on, or if need be, just get a great big vat on it and just get the skeletons to dive in one by one. That's a fantastic idea. You could have like primed skeletons, like basically mm, just a layer of true. paint. That's yeah, like maybe yeah, yeah. Just... submerge the 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 whole skeleton in paint, something like that. Yeah. Or, or whatever uh, medium you're using, I think that could be potentially pretty workable. Um, because like I don't think that bone is significantly different than wood in this regard. I would even say that, uh, venture so far as to say that bone may be more, um, like, stronger than wood. Uh, I think so. Or, and more durable than wood. Um, you could have, like, uh, different colored skeletons. It would be really cool, actually. I was going to say, when it comes to, like, uh, wear and tear on undead, compared to people, you can't really fully notice where and say i mean if you miss if if your zombie's missing an arm if he's got no jaw and if he's there going because his head's been split in two <laughs> then you're going to notice that but if he's got like minor wounds that, that are ripe for infection and insects you know like um carnivorous carrying insects like going in and as you as you do i mean if... most, most things don't eat the bone itself they usually if they eat something they would eat the marrow Mm. And ex exactly, and it's 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 like with 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 that, like you if you ha if you paint a skeleton after a battle because it's painted, you can see where the paint is flecked off. You can see where the blows have struck. You can see, like it, it, we can look at the areas where the paint is missing, and you could use that as a means to figure out which ones are most badly damaged and which ones need repairing compared to the others. Because there's let, let, let's let's say that you're a necromancer, you're going into battle with, with a bunch of skeletons. How bad is it if you don't notice how damaged quite a few of them are, and they fall one after the other because of previous battles, that, and because you're you're not aware of the state that they're in, because the skeletons, you know, like with, with, with how awkward it is to properly look at, you know, properly look at their injuries and whatnot to see where some of the some of the bones are more, most damaged. I think that's a fantastic idea, and it makes a lot of sense to be able to visually see the condition of your skeletons in a much better way than just trying to see cracks on the bone or something. Mm. And, you know, you could give yep. them touch-up coats that would seep into the cracks and maybe even reinforce these um, these faults. Yeah, you could have some kind of, like, resin or something like that. Yeah. That yeah, seeps into the cracks and reinforces the skeleton. Like what they polish That's... tables with, that kind of waxy, hard lacquer. That would be great. Mm. Um, something, something that you just made me think of now. Now, I'm just trying to think of the best way to say this. Have you... 
because uh, this is going on YouTube and don't really want you guys uh, don't really want you to get uh, demonetized. Mm -hmm. um, should, 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 I, should I just say it? I'm not monetized anyway, so you can you can just. Say oh, okay. It. Oh, okay. In that case, <laughs> <laughs> rub hands. Um, okay, so we know about the whole like uh, uh, George, George Floyd riots, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When the police was using rubber bullets on that, did you see what happened to the people the, the bullets were hitting? Oh yeah, it was horrifying. Yeah. There was uh, around that time there was uh, diagrams and uh, bits of art, kind of like edu I guess it was like educational sort of um, sh you know bits of art showing what would happen. But you you've got it where you've got a diagram of a bullet going straight through someone's like. Um, Going, going in, like going in the eye, or going in, like, in like a soft bit of the skull, and going straight through it into the brain. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, if you're doing this in the in the medieval fantasy world, which can be what uh, seventh, eighth um, century to fifteenth, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And, and then, then you got the race. Yeah. I know that by the thirteenth or fourteenth, firearms are starting to come into play. Hmm. Um. So, so you've got that. So. Now, obviously, you're not going to have rubber bullets, and you're not really going to have uh, big riots because of this and that going off. Instead, you've got arrows. Arrows that are quite sharp. Arrows that, um, depending on the type of bow and depending on the person or the magic or whatever factors are in play, could be weaker or stronger than somebody shooting a rubber bullet. And unlike a rubber bullet, these are going to these are going to be meant to kill. Would it possibly be worth it? Because because we've all seen like in films and whatnot, you've got somebody firing an arrow and it goes straight through a skull, like just through, like just just in skeletons dead. Yeah. Yeah. Would it be worth it to have some kind of hardening clay or tissue or something, and like a, a kind of or even a kind of padding um, inside the skull? The skull's gonna it can it's hollow. It's Wait. it's a, it's a skull. Oh. You can, that's a big assumption that, like, if we fire through the skull, the skeleton dies. Yeah. That's yes, true. actually, yes, it is. Um, but you okay, could do case. that. You could fill like things to make them stronger. Mm. Although, would this add more to the weight of the skeleton? Because if would. we're taking a light, if we're taking a light skeleton, then we're adding something heavy to its head. It's going to be top heavy and falling all over the place. I mean, it it, it could actually be like you know how in. Um, Entertainment. We see skeletons like shambling and going and swaying left and right as they're walking and doing all. That could actually be a good excuse for it. Yeah, it's because someone filled his head with lead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> what's 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 up with him? Oh, it's because it's got clay in his head. Why? It stops arrows, doesn't it? <laughs> By the way, coming to weight. That's a, a a really good point that has a lot of implications for melee combat. So. A skeleton accounts for about 14% of your body weight, so mm -hmm. I'll provide both metric and freedom units. If you weigh 90 kilograms... <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> if you weigh 90 uh. kilograms or 198 pounds, that will mean you've got a 12.5 kilo skeleton or a 25 or 27.5 pound skeleton. So this is like a very light frame and you know if you've ever done melee combat like wrestling or whatever against someone that's much lighter than you like for example your little sister or maybe you're a big fat guy and you're manhandling some skinny dude you have like a huge advantage over them so or your or your or your dog's being a little twat so you're wrestling with him and he's there going <laughs> yeah yeah exactly like the skeleton isn't going to be able to resist something like a charge is not going to be able to resist like being pushed around by a living target so either you make use of this as like this lot this lightweight thing as an advantage or you need to add weight to the skeleton to make it more effective in melee combat see that in my mind um for that, I'm I'm just picturing like I'm just picturing a shield wall of skeletons and you can very easily like when it comes to shield walls with people uh, cavalry and line breakers can can of course you know mess them up and you're going to want to attack from the sides and the rear and you're going to want to do this and that. Uh, but when it comes to skeletons, it's a little bit different because when when you're going up against a shield wall, obviously the shield wall will most likely have spears or they'll probably have what um, uh, Alexander the Great has super long spears, which are even longer than normal spears. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, 
And also so, they uh, put the butt of the spear into the ground, so to interrupt. Mm. But yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right. Um what I'm thinking of was because obviously you're not going to have a small like like depending on what you've got, depending on the circumstances of everything that you have, getting a small number of skeletons isn't really going to be a the best option. So what about having a shield wall of skeletons reinforced by the skeletons behind them? Like it, it kind of, I think of it sort of like you know how you've got um you've got like a stick, yeah. I mean I mean I'm gonna use Caesar for Planet of the Apes for this. You've got a stick, normal stick, you break the stick. You put the two pieces together and you try to break that, you can't do it. Yeah. Because right. because the because they're aiding each other and it reinforces each other. It's similar to that. Either Yeah. Okay, but you're basically trying to push, let's say, skeletons into a role that they're kind of unfit for. So, like, mm. you, you're basically forced to use them way less e efficiently when you can, for example, use zombies for the front line that holds, because, you know, a zombie can't easily be killed, usually. So, if you just pile them together as your front line, you know, it, it's they're gonna push it. You know, they're, they're gonna be pretty good front line. You can use and, skeletons for other purposes. Mm. And and with zombies as well, you can also uh, put like barbed wire and mesh on them to. So you know how you got normal chain mail, but with, with zombies, with how they are, like weapons can easily get stuck in uh, the stuff that you put on them. And because they're basically walking meat sacks, they're just basically walking target dummies. You can keep stabbing them, and it just won't work against them because the zombies. I like, think. I think one of the best ways to fix the skeleton for melee combat is to give them heaps of padding, like put a gambeson on them, mm -hmm. and then just put like plate mail over the top of them. You're going to have like it won't be as heavy as a, a human soldier, but it's probably going to be enough that it'll just give them enough of an edge to be able to hold their ground better. Um, I keep I keep thinking about sort of like covering the bones with something to reinforce them and add more weight to them but the thing but the, and i keep thinking of molten metal for this but the, the problem with molten metal is that they won't really it's 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 just gonna just as easily burn the bones as it is to do do something negative to them so you can so when it comes so when it comes to putting like armor on them like you, let's say that you've got a skeleton there with plate armor gambeson helmet uh gauntlets uh, sabatons greaves uh you've got all of all of the stuff on right mm-hmm then wouldn't would people go for the exposed bone areas like the arms uh, like like the the parts of the arms not covered the legs not covered stuff like that well assuming you have left gaps like that then probably um there is some innate defenses though about a naked skeleton which kind of covers this topic a little bit is that like if you're trying to strike a very skinny bone it's going to be more difficult, depending on what kind of weapon you have, than targeting an arm or something, because it's just a very narrow area to hit. So maybe there's some defense in that regard, but yeah, of course, if there's like a femur sticking out in the open, you could quite easily just slide your, um, sort of slash your sword into that and do colossal damage to the bone. Another thing as well, with how light they are, they would be brilliant for um, not not just being like archer and ranger roles, but assassin roles as well. Yeah, because because exactly with that. because with the lack of weight, you can assume that they're going to be able to move quickly. They're going to be able to sort of go from go from eh, to swiggity swooty. I'm coming for that booty. Yeah. Um. May I stop you there just because that's a topic we've got for later on, and we'll go into yeah. like deep detail on that yeah, yeah. <laughs> very soon. So another thing about the, the surface area of a naked skeleton is they're pretty much immune to piercing attacks. Like if you're trying to shoot um, arrows at them, you're very unlikely to hit anything. And if you do hit something, well, so what? You break a rib? Maybe same same with spears as well. Like yeah. it can get sneered on. It can get sneered on the gambeson and the armor, but there's not a likelihood of you actually hitting anything and if anything it can prevent you from using that spear for something else because it's stuck inside the skeleton that is still trying to get to you yeah um so yeah they're they're very resistant to slashing attacks as well because there's no flesh to cut 
So um, yep, it, they can't bleed. Like you have to just smash them to pieces, yeah. and yeah. it's way tougher to do with bladed weapons. Yep. Along along with this as well, like depending on the kind of skeleton, like if it's the kind of skeleton where destroying the head can can end it, then you know fair dues. But if it's if it's the kind of skeleton where it's going to be tough as nails and you have to absolutely destroy it to end it. Like because it's it will still keep coming up. Like you could break its legs, you could uh, remove an arm, you could dislocate a jaw, you could uh, remove half its head, and it could still be there with one arm trying to crawl towards you, dagger in hand, wanting to stab you to death. Yeah, I guess that's the decision that the author of the fantasy world has to come to grips with. Like if they want to have their skeletons like that, I personally find it a bit overpowered. Mm. Um, I'd rather that you know. You cut the skeleton's head off then the whole thing collapses or something like that yeah but but if you cut off a limb it's probably going to still keep coming at you um something i feel uh something something i think would be a good thing to talk about what about the morale of facing a skeleton because this isn't a person like like and this this is for every undead shot sure, absolutely but when it comes to skeletons like they're not just rotting uh zombies they're not really uh, abominations or uh, stitched monstrosities these these are just skeletons they there's a lack of yeah uh, i agree arguably back in the middle ages skeleton was a sort of uh, i would say artistic symbol for death mm. but i think even now skeletons are not really that um feared like I, I and I and I don't think they were feared as much back then. Death was very, very common, you know, in is the this, Middle Ages. Is this because of all the memes that we have of skeletons? <laughs> that I don't think it's help. just because of the memes. I think it's <laughs> because like skeletons were honestly pretty much everywhere. So yeah, yeah. So there's that really. Um, so, something I wanted to say was when it, when it comes to skeletons, like when it comes to uh, zombies. Especially with zombie uh, films and things with zombies in them, you can see that there is a very big personal aspect to them. I mean, uh, the Scourge from World of Warcraft have a good, very good example of this, where not only are you fighting against a dead friend, family member, loved one, but they're also going to be stronger because of all of the undead stuff that's happened to them to make them super, uh, super strong. But when it comes to zombies, it, you have a rotting corpse that looks just like uh, that is the body of somebody that you cared about deeply coming at you, and that can be a very big. Uh, thing drains on the morale but when it comes to skeletons there is a quite an impersonal thing to them because you could be fighting the skeleton of somebody you used to know and you would never know because it's a skeleton yep i think overall a skeleton is just a far less terrifying uh type of undead to face for a whole, a whole host of reasons you've got like the visual aspect which you mentioned you've got the distinct lack of like a cloud of flies and like rotting smells and whatever else it's also mm. much like it's a lot less horrifying in my opinion to see a skull than to see like a, a rotten face with like maggots crawling in it and like all kinds of shit mm. like that i think that i'd much rather face a skeleton than a zombie now something i believe could be of use with skeletons so it's something that could be utilized to a good effect and you and this is this is with war um like when it comes to his, historical warfare this is with warfare all throughout human history and that is stuff to demoralize the enemy in the sense of noises um like people like you'll have armies that will chant things you'll have armies that will sing you'll have armies that will make like big <laughs> noises um, you'll have army armies that will do different stuff. Like they'll be they'll be doing war drums. They'll be blowing horns. That you know they will be making a massive ruckus, uh, a, a massive uh, cacophony as they march to the target to inspire fear in the target. Yeah. So, so it, it, isn't it kind of like a, a makes them appear bigger than they are sort of thing? Yeah. yeah, that's true. That they can't really do that. But besides, well, they... you know, the clanking noise. Yeah. That, yeah. That's and... not really that's usually not as, as loud as all the other things so. us no but i was thinking that could work for its own reason because it's not as loud as a massive you know like a, a massive group of, of men and women or just men or whatever going you know just like screaming and cheering and getting right ready for a good scrap uh this these these are just 
hollowed skeletons. These, these are just shambling piles of bones. They're chittering, they're chatting, they're, the bones are rubbing against each other. They're, they're not even trying to, to do it. They're, they're just naturally making these noises and it adds like a sort of eeriness to it because it, it's more quiet, but it's continuous. Yeah, it it's, would be it's, a it's creepy sound for sure. Mm. And it kind of like sets the tone because when you hear that, you know, it, when you hear it, it's it's not only is it an indicator that they're nearby, but it's also an indicator because of how quiet they are that they are very close. Yeah, compared to compared to having plenty of time um, to get ready because a war horn and the distance is blown and so the ground is shaking because the cavalry charge is coming at you. <laughs> I'm coming back very shortly to the the whole weapons thing. I wanted to talk about what kind of weaponry would be best against a naked skeleton. Mm -hmm. so for standard kinds of weapons that you'd see used against people i think stuff like machetes falchions maybe battle axes would be good because these are like chopping weapons that have a bit of sort of heft to them and they might be able to shear through a bone completely uh the other kind of weapon that might be good is like maces and clubs mm -hmm. but i personally think long stuff yeah but I personally think that the best weapon against them would be something very long, narrow, and sort of strong, like imagine a metal pole or something. And the reason why I think this is, is because you know like when you're using a weed whacker or a whippersnipper to cut grass, right? Yeah. The grass is very light, so you have to hit it with tremendous speed, otherwise it'll move out of the way. And What about... Also... So, sorry, um, what about a halberd? Uh, I think also it's... chopping, uh, but you would need to like put quite a bit of strength behind the head, um, and the so the thing is that halberd, uh, halberd's thing is that it can be both used for thrusting. At least the the proper halberd is that it can be used both for thrusting and kind of like you know smashing, smacking you know with the with the sharp end, uh, or like. A, what I mean is like the the wide end for like chopping and the one that for thrusting. But the issue is that um, you can't really thrust with a skeleton, so mm. you would have to like you know only chop. And even then, I'm not sure how uh, effective it would be to just have like the end, the chopping end, and you would have to put enough strength to break the bone with essentially the first hit. Yeah. Uh, arguably, I would say that. Uh, a lot of weapons that are not effective in real combat would be very effective against a skeleton because yeah. like uh big like wooden hammers and such so like really really cheap stuff things that you can make very very easily in very large quantities can be really effective against skeletons so mm -hmm. like your your war hammers your maces your etc anything even if it's made out of wood it can break bone especially like like old bone coming back um, to my whippersnipper analogy real quick i'd like to oh yeah apologies that I... yeah. yeah so basically you've got a light piece of grass right mm -hmm. and you have to hit it really hard and fast otherwise it's going to move out of the way and not be cut i think it's a similar thing with a skeleton's bones especially if it's a light naked skeleton you need something that hits in a very narrow area to apply as much force in a small spot so that the bones will shatter or deform or whatever so like something that's very like quickly moved like a pole with a lot of like force and speed at the end of the of the pole smacking into a bone it doesn't give it enough uh time to be able to move out of the way so it has to take the impact and that impact will go straight into the bone and like shatter it so i think that something with a very high velocity that within a very narrow striking point is going to be very effective against naked skeletons more so than halberds and axes and things of that nature um what about a what's it called it's um you know how you got like a chain with a mace head at the end of it and you've got flail. like a look yeah yeah so what about a flail because with that you can how you can spin it around you can get a real good velocity in it and then you can just absolutely yeah. smash it not yeah. at any one particular thing, but you smash it in the direction of a skeleton. 
I think it would be I great. Think we'll see. We're not making a, a um, description for paladins here. <laughs> it's not a paladin <laughs> podcast. It's a necromancer podcast. <laughs> let's, uh, let's focus on how we can make those skeletons resistant. <laughs> so I, I believe that things like padding, as, as Chip has mentioned before here, I believe they can be a, a good start for uh, helping uh, our good skellies resist the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the filthy paladins. And um, uh, sorry, yeah. I was just gonna say, and by the way, an armored skeleton, in my opinion, is probably going to be nigh indestructible. And we can go into the reasons for that if you like, or if you want to finish on the previous point. Uh, whichever I'm able. Okay, let's hear what you were going to say about the previous point. Uh, which uh, which one? Which 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 if one? If you can was remember it, it was about the the flail and the. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, when it comes when it comes to flail, so you you can you can the reason why I think this would work uh, quite well for skeletons. Now, when it comes to an armored skeleton, the, the sh shifting it to protect the skeleton and then not doing a sneaky a sneaky paladin uh, <laughs> a, a sneaky bee. <laughs> so you got a flail, and let, let's say you've got a holy a holy boy down there. He's he's got his flail out. You know, he he's proper like whips it out. He's impressing all all of his priest buddies, smashing that flail around, le wrecking things left, right, and center. Then you get in your skeletons with armor, gambeson, things to absorb the the blows, stuff like that. Now, when it comes now, when it comes to a flail, obviously a flail can smash itself against armor and it can dent the armor. But when it comes to gambeson, gambeson, I think is usually usually is talked about when it comes to sharp weapons, like it, it prevents the blow from sharp weaponry. But how would a gambeson fare against, or, or or padding, or cloth, or you know, like really thick uh, stuff like that? How would that fare against, say, a flail? Well, what I would say is I would combine both padding, like the gambeson, and the armor, because the skeleton, in order to need, in order to wear armor, requires some more sort of um, flesh substitutes so that the armor sits properly on it. So that's the first thing. Uh, about the flail hitting this combination of padding and armor, I think it would do no damage whatsoever because the flail ball or point or whatever is going to strike the metal. The metal is going to deform. The force is going to go into the padding and there's no flesh to absorb any of that concussive damage like there would be in an actual person. So the and bone would knock is... them down and yeah. Yeah, the, the skeleton might get knocked down, but it's not going to be damaged by it, in my opinion. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. A skeleton like that would be arguably harder to kill than a person. In But the thing is, you would probably need a pretty thick padding for this. Yeah. That, like, probably would be very difficult to kill because what you would have to do is you would have to basically, like, get it on the ground, you know, climb on top of it and smack it until it dies, you know? What about its head? You can put armor in its head, like you can, you can give it a helmet. But if a flail was to smash against the skeleton's helmet, I mean, there is like there are like like um, like like neck guards and such mm. on armor. So, and you need it. Like, needn't give oh, it. Oh, a, sorry, and you needn't oh, give it a human. Could, like, like, sorry, yeah. you can go on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how I would kill a skeleton like that is um, probably best option I can think of is like get a rope around its neck and like pull it off because that depends i mean pull the head off uh because that depends on how well is the head attached to the rest of the body and if you can break a human spine with it then i think i would argue that the magic does not hold the skeleton that strongly mm -hmm. you know as as strongly uh, as like flesh and, and 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 tendons and muscles and such. You know? Um, well, I want all I want to say is when it comes to that, I do agree. But I'm thinking, what was it I was thinking of? Um, when it comes when it comes to a skeleton, you can have a flail like, you can have a flail going into it. You can have a flail smashing against it and all of that. Um, but when it comes to when it comes to it. How? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you, you've got yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know what I was on about now. So you got a, you got a guy there. He's got a flail and he's smashing against skeletons and whatnot. Or he's got a weapon that can go through skeletons. 
How many skeletons do you think he can go through before he gets tired? Oh yeah, that's not a big factor. Because, because we're, because if you've got a, but if you've got like an army of uh, humans, or if you've got like a force of humans, depending against uh, skeletons, humans that need to be fed, sheltered, that have the yeah. whole thing of of more of morale to deal with. Some of them might try to flee. Um, you've got the whole, you've got the whole aspect that they're gonna get tired and and we're lifting their weapons to strike against skeletons, skeletons that are tireless that can just keep going and going and going and going until they're destroyed. Yeah, this is a benefit that all undead have, and I think mm. it's a major one. Um, coming back to the helmet real quick. Sorry, Seventh, I didn't mean to interrupt you twice there. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, I was going to say, like, to solve the problem of a flail hitting the, the, the helmet and damaging the skull underneath, you could just give it, like, a lot of padding, like a ridiculous amount, like too much for a human, and then put some kind of, like, custom helmet over it like maybe a bucket with the with the eyes cut out or something so the skeleton can see if it needs that and you know it'll be ridiculous on a human and very like very much a hindrance to a human but to a skeleton it wouldn't really matter and it would protect the skull really well what kind of helmet is it just any gigantic metal thing that you could put over it a bucket a metal bucket Yep. Slap a metal bucket on there. Get some rope uh, to to keep it on. Yeah, a job heavy done. duty job. bucket. Yeah, jo jo job done. <laughs> yeah, it's normal for helmets to have like uh, padding under them. Like both helmets to have to have padding as well as like armor to have padding underneath it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. We w we would just like add more padding so as to like make up for the lack of uh, flesh. So yeah. Um, I'm just I'm just looking at the points here. So it's hard to hit you to like a surface area. I mean, if we are to pr proceed, I can move over to your boy. Uh, the uh, usage of skeletons as spies and rangers in a combat environment. So Ooh. instead of working against the design of skeletons, of them being very light and potentially having the possibility of being way 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 faster than both uh the the other undead as well as humans because i mean it's like 14 percent of of the mass of a regular human you know of a human the same size it's gonna be way 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 lighter gonna be way uh easier for it to move mm. yes, so we let's can do this let's cover relatively this. yeah relatively easily turn them into something uh of like a ranger type individual like like i mean just hell uh skeleton is like is like 90 percent of it is is like see-through you know like 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 argue well, well, well not the the whole thing but i mean like like most of its like po posture is like see-through you can just like throw a cloak over it or something and it's not really going to be that much of a target you know yeah so like like it can easily hide um when it moves like if you can lubricate its its you know its joints and everything or or like do something to like pad its joints and such suddenly it it, it, it can not make any sounds at all when moving so they can really really easily make for a good sort of like ranger slash spy type of individual right you know, um, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. something I was, I was thinking of for this. Well, if you had like you know those typical uh, like wood elf um, kind of situations where you got like um, elves and whatnot, like yeah. going from tree to tree, and surely a skeleton exactly. because of how yeah because of how light it is and because of how yeah. effective it can move, and it would be perfect for for guerrilla warfare, wouldn't it? Exactly, exactly. That's that's what I'm what I'm talking about. Is like like make it you know make it. Um, easily move on the treetops, on rooftops, etc., etc. Like it's obviously going to be significantly faster than anything else. So, like, hence why I I believe that um, you know using it as a sort of like like ranges as a sort of like uh, archers shooting from a distance. You wouldn't even need to really like um, 
defend them that well so long as nobody goes into them with melee because like they're almost immune to arrows right like like you have to you have to shot shoot with with some like a crossbow to actually break bone you know or, or like you need to hit exactly the bone in order to to even damage it so mm. you end up with a uh, ranged unit that's immune to arrows or like near immune to arrows that's extremely fast so all the like most melee melee kind of int infantry units can't even catch up to it suddenly you know we have we have very very good ranged infantry yeah by the way if i may um i'd like to say that this lightweight of the skeleton spy or ranger or whatever that you're talking about Will allow it to climb through like the tops of trees like a mm -hmm. spider monkey or something because you know yeah. like if you're a 80 kilogram human tugging on a, a little branch you're going to probably snap it whereas the skeleton it can just climb oh through. god oh i've just thought of something <laughs> sure have you guys ever seen a video of how quickly a bear can climb a tree oh no but i believe they can do it very yeah, fast I, I, i've seen it i've seen it so like like, like, like essentially like like on all fours uh not even caring that it's like vertical i've seen it yeah i think it was a grizzly but i may be wrong it's it's they they can just rapidly ascend trees what if you was to get a skeletal bear and you slap a skeleton archer on its back <laughs> suddenly you have a creature that can chase you up trees has good range isn't isn't doesn't have the human weaknesses of being distracted or have we literally just fucking made skeletons the scariest little uh the scariest mobs in a game literally yeah. because you you cannot escape it it's just like do you escape to, to a treetop it just fucking climbs right after you 10 times as fast as you uh it, do you want to like like uh you know you can like give them uh, claws or something, and they will just climb up the fucking walls because they're so light. That's perfect. They're the perfect siege unit because, like, they can if if you can make them quiet somehow, they can just climb the walls, take down the archers, and suddenly, bang! You have you have perfect assassins, right? See, they, something... they just open the walls for you. Something oh, else. Sorry, I was... gates. Go on. So, something else. I was thinking about. I thought about this a few times, but I thought it was quite stupid. They have a rib cage. You can put stuff in there. Yeah. yeah. Imagine, That's imagine, good. imagine a small barrel of explosive of, of explosive exactly. liquid. Exactly. You send, you, you, send, you send in Barry the dipshit skeleton. Barry sprints uh, sprints down to the wall, <laughs> and then and then another archer knocks an arrow, fires it, and Barry the dipshit skeleton suddenly has become a martyr for his cause. The wall's now destroyed. <laughs> Yep. And 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 suddenly you've got the clacking of skeletons charging in, daggers in the air, you know. Yeah. Or you can just march your your main army, like you can have march the zombies in. The, the the zombies just walk up to the walls. They just wait for the gates to be open, and it's right in. Skeletons? Do, do skeletons even need ladders to nope. climb up? So. Uh, if you give them something that can like stick to the the wall, then why would they need a ladder? Like if if you give them something like like claws to like you know stick to the stone and climb up it, so that would be yeah that would be, that would totally work for it. Also, they're so light that you don't really need that much of a grip for them to be able exactly. to ascend. Yeah. Yep. Fuck it. Can we just catapult them in? <laughs> I guess. Ah, uh, arguably they're pretty light, so they wouldn't suffer as much from the fall. So, <laughs> um, yeah. arguably oh. you almost could. You almost totally could do it, something like that. Yeah, and they're like your your shock troops. You know, they're very light, very fast. They can just like swarm the knights or whoever it is on the walls, and like they just ru like run right past them to you know the thing that opens the gate right and they they just do it you know what if what if you was to what if you was to lob in a bag of skeletons <laughs> yep like like, bag of skeletons. like like think like think about it. so so you've got a, a basically like a like a bag right or, or like a container or or, or, or something or like a, a net and it's completely filled with bones like you could have like oh, about oh, five and you like like because it's you know we we we've got uh we've got December coming up so like you 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 just uh you, you just like like make it red and like like uh, decorated properly you know so yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. like 
like and 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 as you eat it you shout merry christmas <laughs> right so yeah, it yeah. goes right on this wall they're like oh it's christmas the the, the necromancer you know uh he he uh he gave us a present you know he's a he's a probably a w wants to be a good friend he doesn't want to go to prison so, so they open it up and, and it's like a bag of skeletons the prison <laughs> is and the present is death and uh, <laughs> the skeletons open and, open, and, and, open, and, and open, because open, because of the origins the of, because of the origins of um because of the origins of 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 biological warfare like that you when you say merry christmas you say it in mongolian <laughs> 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 I was thinking about Trojan Horse, but whatever. Uh, that comes next. Okay. Well, uh, anyway. I, was, I, was, uh, I was just thinking, like, for, for the skeletons, like, you love the bag. The skeletons, like, form where after it lands, they escape, and then and then they, 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 they're going, uh, what, what, what was it? G Gwen Estias, fuck boy. <laughs> 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 By the way, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, the usage of skeletons as like the thing that can't be escaped is perfect. You're gonna have somebody watching or listening to this, and all they're gonna be thinking of, right? Skeletons, skeletons, skeletons. No other undead exists. Just skeletons. Everything is a skeleton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, that's the skeleton podcast. <laughs> 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 No, I mean, I mean, like, there's, there's no other undead. Other undead do not exist. It's skeletons, or it's nothing. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so, oh, what should we uh, proceed to next? Uh, Ghost, I know you had some some to say about the uh, necromancer society. Oh wait, wait! Before we get to that, sorry, we missed something yeah. very important: flying skeletons. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, I was thinking of that. Um, okay, so what you could do now, when it comes to flying skeletons, are they going to need like a kind of leathery membrane, a on an artificial? Are they going to need artificial wings, or can they fly on their own on skeletal? Like just, I wings? think they I need... don't think they can fly on bones. No, you'd need either some kind of membrane or maybe feathers. Yeah, yeah, okay. And of course, so... when we talk about, we we need like helicopter skeletons. We we don't oh. mean like like. Flapping their wings, <laughs> their hands. Oh, and... I I imagine them like kind of Icarus style, like the arms become oh. wings, and then they uh, like the, the best I've seen that kind of thing do was soaring. I don't think there's any creature, although I may be wrong. It's so light though. That's the thing. I mean, we could so... we could do we could do what the greenskins do with them bloody gobos. And um, what we could what we could always do is we could just have a have skeletons with like uh, leathery membrane or feathers. Yeah. Catapult them up, and then they just glide in. Yeah. Gliders. Yeah. Fuck. That would that would totally work. And I think that you can totally um, like because what a bat is is basically a bit of flesh draped over the skeleton of a rat. <laughs> With very long arms, I shit you not. That is what a what a, is literally what a bat is. It's it's like rat with bat, big ears and long arms. I thought a bat was a I thought a bat was a squeak was a squeaky sky puppy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's not a puppy. It's basically a sky rat. I want a pet uh, bat. So hence why I totally think that like with little enough flesh, you you can totally have flying skeletons. Hello there. Oh, is that who I think it is? Oh, well, is, that my, is that my boy? <laughs> Fucking thing, you not wake me! <laughs> oh. Okay, another another benefit to skeletons is that they don't get is that they don't oversleep and get late for podcasts. <laughs> That's true, they that? are always awake. They never tire. By the way, oh. um, I had a crazy idea. You know how Leonardo da Vinci made that weird corkscrew helicopter yeah. thing? Yeah. Well, yes. You know the flaw of that is that, like, if if it could fly in the air, you'd get tired from pedaling, but the skeleton doesn't tire. So yeah. Oh wait. Exactly. Oh fuck. So you can have like oh, these yeah. little helicopter skeletons flying around everywhere, like causing mayhem, dropping bombs or whatever. It'd be awesome. Um, a fantasy death helicopter. I'm interested. <laughs> a fantasy death. <laughs> <laughs> would you call that that is literally what it is no it's just all like all i can think of is like be, be me master necromancer flying flying in skeletal helicopter death contraption <laughs> flying 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 over flying over wood elf ghetto 
Fucking uh, for- Flintstones technology. <laughs> uh, for- for- fortunate, fortunate son playing on Skelly Radio. It's. <laughs> I I ain't no I ain't no li- I ain't no licious son no. I <laughs> dro- dro- dropping dropping zombies on on the fil- on the filthy elves once wanting to wanting to get oh, the ghetto. Oh dude, that'd be like your own total fucking like necromantic ne- air force. That'd be lit. Like yeah. we already have like flying fortresses. Why not have the air force accompany it? We have griffins. What about the fucking technology? How about the dwarves have something like that? Uh, I mean, dwarves do in Warhammer and also in well, I say World of Warcraft. Gnomes have that in World of Warcraft, but uh, I mean, uh, well, well, is is quote unquote little bit inspired by Warhammer. So, also, if you guys can hear barking and explosions from my microphone, it's not because we've got World War Three yet over here. It's not because we've got a revolution yet. It's because some assholes are setting off fireworks, and my dog uh, it lo- enjoys barking at them. Okay, Honestly, I can't hear anything. If that was World right. War Three. It would hit us first, knowing. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing history, yeah, I first. think I would know that way before you did. <laughs> I feel like I know before all of you fuckers. I'm in America. Yeah, but you've got like. Poland. Oh shit! Got, like... Oh shit! <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Next before me now, fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> oh fucking no. Um one other point about skeletons that is pretty cool I think is that um they're very light, right? So you could put very large shoes on them. And they're also very strong. The large shoes might make them able to run across water because you know like That's true, because the, the skeletons oh, are like... no. the thing is it would be difficult to find like a uh center of mass because I mean a skeleton is light, so it's like it's going to be a it's going to have issues like actually holding itself on water. It, w- it would have, it would need basically both shoes and like gloves, essentially. Yeah. Oh, okay, uh, you just gave me a, a fucking horrible idea, <laughs> an absolutely fucking deplorable, grotesque idea that should never have been thought of from the deepest recesses of human misery. It, sh- it should not exist. Me, clown skeletons. Oh, <laughs> what skeletons? Clown. Clown skeletons. That would be awesome. They came for us at night, cackling and cracking of their bones, keeping us awake. Oh, yeah, yeah. And in between, true. and in between was the honking of horns. <laughs> that's true, because skeletons uh, are always smiling. They're always grinning. So, yeah. So they're always happy, you know? You can't convince me otherwise. So uh, that's, I think they would want to share uh, that happiness with the use of knives and other such things. Sharing our happiness, join the collective, shed your meat prison, strip of the flesh, and join <laughs> us in the holy bone. Let us let us strip the prison of flesh Can that we may unearth the, the grand and grant freedom to the great skeleton beneath. Remove the coffin of meat. Okay, so um... hey, free yourself from your flesh prison. Let's. Yo. I think this is a very smooth transition to to uh, talking about skeletons and in the in a necromantic society. Yes. yes. Uh, I'm just going to quickly blow my nose. So, and you... Besides being clowns and entertainment for children, <laughs> what else? Um, I think for sure anywhere where you need sort of um, clean hygienic stuff, like maybe farming, would be great. Mm. Okay, so we've got farming. Um, I thought about this quite a bit. Now, you can use messenger birds uh, when it comes to skeletons. Now, what you can do is you can have a kind of membrane or feathers with the wings, and you can convert the ribcage into a makeshift um, pouch of sorts to put exactly. the message. Yeah. So you've got that. You can use skeletons for agriculture. Um, my the I have necromancers in uh, a country that of mine. And I mean, skeletons in general for messengers, I mean, they can move faster than most other things their size, and they never tire. So they yeah. can just run at speed higher than a human for long, long, long distances. So you can always have great uh, messengers in that way. Yeah. I'm just imagine. I'm just imagining that. Like, imagine walking on a road, turning around, seeing a fucking skeleton sprinting at you at, <laughs> at, at top speed. <laughs> you shit you shit yourself and then skeleton runs straight past you. <laughs> Imagine if it was painted the skeleton blue. Just, just clacks, clack, 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 top of the morning to you, sir. <laughs> Keeps going. 
it just goes nyum. <laughs> oh fucking hell! Oh, uh, so yeah, so you got Agricultural, so you got messengers, um, flying, and sp- and Usain Bolt sprinting. Um, thing is as well, like humans, if you look at like humans histor- uh, not historically, uh, like pre- I guess prehistorically, uh, like old humans, hasn't hasn't it been found that humans can run up to like what twenty eight, thirty something miles per hour? Yeah, what's the same bolt yeah, do? I, think they can uh, I don't. I'm not really. T- I think I'm not really too sure because I think you can do like 28. And I remember the thing I was um, looking at, and it was basically saying how you know how like how you had uh, humans way back when when you had like really big predators and we had uh, spears and fire was the latest invention by Ooga Booga, yeah. Uh, yeah. 45 kilometers per hour. Uh, Holy I shit! Facts are recorded kilometers per hour. Shit. And that is very, very fast. And and this this is you saying about, or is this like older, ancient human? I believe that was you saying Bolt. Jesus fuck! Oh, so okay. that was that was the today's humans, not the humans of the you know past. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. No, no, no. You first. Uh, I'm also looking up a bit. I just remembered something because, uh, as a generative weeb, I read a bit of fucking JoJo, and in one is this thing, a JoJo there, reference? It completely more said it is, but it's <laughs> also like um, because fucking Rocky did a bit of his research, and uh, remember like a, a little tidbit. There is like a fucking like a Native American tribe who had their own running technique, and actually looking at it more, um. They had uh, sort of uh, shoes that actually um, support and uh, a fe- are, are, are a fucking feature of modern running shoes. Like, these motherfuckers actually kind of invented, like, for a really good way of running. I don't know how far they ran, though. Do you know, know the name these of the tribe? Were... I mean, uh, I, I really want to say something dark now in response to that. Uh, Tarahumara. Huma, uh, uh, fucking Tarahumara. <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna put it in the fucking chat so you can look. And whereabouts are whereabouts are they in the world? Wait, what? Uh, where where the tribe? Whereabouts is it located in the world? Um, I could have sworn it was like somewhere around fucking. I actually have no claim to check. Ta- I'm just gonna fucking go back myself. Tata Humara, uh, tribe location. The fuck? Where is this? Mexico. Oh, I was gonna, I was I was hoping I was hoping it was gonna be um, uh, North America because I really wanted to make a really bad joke about them not running fast enough because people have guns. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, no, 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 no. That's the thing. Is like the person does not run fast enough, then the skeleton will. <laughs> yeah, that's, learned. So, so something to think about when it comes to the skeleton. So if we're turning the rib cage into a, a pouch to transport messages. Are they going to be running on two legs or on all four legs? Are they going to be coming at you like Usain Bolt, or are they going to be coming at you like a an animal possessed? Um, a human is like objectively designed to walk on two legs, yeah, and yeah. that is how their their skeleton is set and everything. But like an animal would potentially be able to like you know move obviously faster if it's on all fours. Human no. That's actually a good point. Would human would human skeleton messengers be better than animals or what? Uh, no, I think animal would be better because the big thing about human is that uh, a human is able to run for long periods of time without tiring. Uh, meanwhile, an animal is better at sprinting, and that's the the, the the like that's the way we managed to screw up most animals and how we hunted is that uh, the made... yeah 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 like we could we could move for a very 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 extended period period of time yeah. I mean, uh, so i, I mean explain, like with, i mean i mean like with with skeleton animals like they're not yeah, yeah. Be... skeleton animals would most likely be much better messengers because they would be able to just move faster and they wouldn't tire so, like, yeah, on, on all fours, an animal is able to move uh, way faster than a. So, what you're telling me is, is that you can have skeleton, uh, skeleton people as messengers if you just be a complete fucking asshole and ruin someone's day. Yeah. Yeah. Although, to be fair, isn't that like a risk with um, messenger birds as well? Like, it's. What was it a thing? Was it a thing back back in the day 
Uh, was it a thing for people to shoot uh, messenger birds to yeah, get the message? Yeah, it was. Absolutely yeah. was a thing. Yep. So, yeah, so this has its own perks and negatives. Well, no, an arrow probably can't hit a, a hurt a fucking skeleton. Yeah, but it, it would hurt its the membrane used for flying. But yeah. like, if you use some other animal, like a ground animal, for um running as a messenger, then it would be pretty h hard to take down because it, a skeleton although, is way faster than a than a. Although you do, animal. although to that you can have traps, and depending on how stupid the skeleton is, it can easily fall into a hole. That's yeah, true. I was about to say it's not just a skeleton about just doing that. It's also the fact that it's the skeleton running towards somewhere, even possibly running towards a person without even saying anything or acknowledging their presence. So there's a chance that somebody's like, ah, fucking ah, and just beat that shit down. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It would have to basically run through the wilderness, and then it would be like vulnerable to being hunted down by creatures. So yeah. Oh yeah. Um, something like, even if a creature doesn't really feel that it's like oh it's it's meat or something like that it could still like jump it just because it's moving. Um, something that I feel can be brought up when it comes to skeletons in society. I now we can we can always like sort of picture skeletons like especially with agriculture. So when it comes to agriculture for for uh, one of my king, uh, kingdoms for example that that has this kind of stuff, uh, people have the option. It's not forced, well depending on the king, but they have the option of. Um, having their uh, dead relatives turned in, uh, raised as skeletons and made into working the fields. And what this does is because this skele these skeletons will not tire, they will just keep, they can just keep going on and on and on. This reduces taxes for the, for the family in question, and it will also allow them to pursue other kinds of careers, which can, uh, depend like depending on the people, can lead to better, to better quality of life and it can also lead to better advancements for the country in question because these are not an oppressed uh, working class that are forced to tend the fields and whatnot these are people that while their great grandparents are tending the fields as undead these are people that have less that are paying less taxes so they have more money to spend and and, and get educated but it also means that they can do other stuff like they can pursue different careers they can travel they can um maybe like the one to get into blacksmithing or maybe the one to get into exploring or you know what if what if the skeleton wants to pursue a career in in law for example you know you never uh, know so, uh, skeletons <laughs> don't have rights we don't care about them <laughs> um, one thing you know, there's a skeleton inside of you right now do you are you saying he doesn't have any laws are you the skeleton, uh, yeah. the skeleton inside of me right now he can he can shut the fuck up <laughs> honestly yeah fuck he need i'm doing all the work here it's it's uh, my my I've got I've got meat around him. He can't do shit. Um, <laughs> also, also, uh, also, when it comes to a, a, a skeletons in society, you can absolutely, absolutely uh, use them as uh, not just workhorses, but you can also use them as um, uh, like you know how you get like donkeys that can carry stuff, a pack mule. Yeah, yeah, you can use them as pack mules. And a good example I have of this is uh, the, uh, the country that I have is basically um, it's, it's got like a land bridge connecting it to another part of the world, yeah? And on this on this really big bridge, it's freezing cold. Uh, the, the living there is, is absolutely terrible. And when it comes to people going up there or people traveling up there to talk to the people up there or, you know, um, non-consensually acquire some, some, some bodies... Uh, all of the hauling and all of the carrying goes to skeletons. It goes to undead. It goes. It goes to ones that are not going to be afflicted by the temperature as humans would be. Precisely, because, because like, I feel like a, a big thing when it comes to absolutely freezing, terrible conditions. When it comes to humans, you will tend to see that humans can make mistakes. Like if 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 you've got five people and every person has. Um, at least carrying enough food for themselves or carrying enough food for other people or whatnot, and one person falls, uh, falls to hypothermia and dies, not only is that person gone, all the food with them is gone as well. And if you're, exactly. taking, if you're taking the food with you, then you're carrying extra weight. It's going to slow you down and it's going to make things worse for you. But if you've got a skeleton doing it, a human can fail, a skeleton can keep going on. Another yep. good thing and, about a skeleton yeah. is like it's got no flesh that can freeze and make it lock up. Mm. 
Yes, but also uh, like rapid freezing and heating of things like bone can also make them brittle. However, it's certainly not nowhere like near as like like the thing that's going to actually kill you um, if you were like a human. So, uh, but also uh, what else? Uh, like skeletons are totally immune to things like like poison gases and like disease. So mm, in yeah. all those environments, they they just don't care. Yeah, for me, I feel like skeletons would probably be the most useful in mining. Like, cultivation, yeah, but mining is probably the most fucking dangerous. There's cave-ins, there's always a fear of your own life, there's uh, poisonous there's, gases possibly being yeah, digging yeah. up. Uh, another, I think I've got a good point raised when it comes to, have you, um, what's it called, a hundred ways, to, or is it a thousand ways to die in the West? We're in, we're in, because of the gases, you'll have people, uh, like miners will have, like, really bad, um, kind of, like, uh, living conditions, I guess. Because you know, like uh, the taste, the taste will be fucked up. So they need to, so they will be regularly eating like uh, certain types types of food, which will be bad for them. But you got cave ins, you've got gases, you've got all kinds of stuff. If you if you've got skeletons, it does work. Anything else when it comes to that? Because I can, I'm just thinking whether a skeleton would be able to would a skeleton be able to wield a big pickaxe and smash I mean, it? Uh, probably. There's, you can probably train skeletons up to a certain point, so making them. I at least have a general idea how to use a pickaxe would probably help because it also, you know, it takes a lot of fucking stamina to swing that thing day after day. Skeletons don't give a flying fuck. Mm. And uh, let's see here. I mean, again, like there's also like all kinds of dumb shit, like the fucking uh, miner's lung, which plagued America for a good bit while we're fucking urbanization. It was America or fucking Europe? I can't remember. I think it was everywhere. It was... Black lung, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Just black lung, just fucking mining, mining, and eventually you, you just the fucking coal gets into you. Um, question: Human society, as it currently is, and through a lot in history, we have people that work. They do the work, they get paid. Yeah. If you have skeletons replacing all of the work, mining, agriculture, uh, hauling things, messages, how would that affect working life for the people? What kind of careers and jobs well, would people have? You'd end up like today, uh, where people are highly specialized and whatever. Yeah, I was about to say, it's probably going to make them try to focus on more, like, other jobs, because, like, oh, shit, we're going to be out of certain things, so, okay, how do we get jobs again? Oh, I heard these motherfuckers needed, like, an engineer, or oh, these motherfuckers need to have, they need to develop better cultivation techniques for the skeletons. These guys need to learn how to better manage their skeletons. These guys need to, it's, it's basically all, like, ideas that are, like, um probably centered around their society, because it's, it's pretty much like a, um, how to say, uh, shit, it's basically, like, on a need basis for, like, that kind of society, because skeletons are pretty much going to be replacing all that hard-hitting stuff, so they need to have, like, intellectuals to kind of figure the rest of that shit out. Mm. So, like, yeah. we probably have, like, our own base ideas. These motherfuckers can probably figure out something pretty goddamn creative by the end of the day, if they actually have the time and reason to. By the way... Um... Oh, uh, yeah? Not, not, was... Probably not right away, but still... I was gonna say, like, skeleton policemen would be much better than zombie policemen, because they're, like, less terrifying and they're not gonna leave, like, chunks of flesh inside your house. I both agree and disagree with that. I both okay. agree on this in the sense that, yes, that, that you know, that would be better, because they're not leaving chunks anywhere. And with, with skeletons, you can trust that people would be more trusting of them, I guess. But also, bad, but also I disagree, because... A skeleton won't be able to tell right from wrong in the same sense a human can. A, a skeleton can obey the law, and it can enforce the law, but it can't actually differentiate between the context of different situations. Oh, well, That's, I meant more in the sense of, you know, just guards keeping things in line, not necessarily, like, oh, a good enough. policeman. <laughs> I think the way this could work is, like, you have a human guard that's like overseeing the skeletons yeah, and like a necromancer. Just, yeah essentially or like a necromancer but arguably like that depends on like how your society is structured if you have like necromancers being at the very like top of society then um he would delegate the work of uh like commanding the skeletons to somebody who's not taught in the art itself so like he would just raise like a hundred skeletons at once and then just have some like law enforcers command them uh, on the actual streets while the man himself is like you know doing some other stuff. Um, something I've got uh, written down for the skeleton usage in a necromancer society. I've got I've got farmers written down, but I've also got craftsmen. Now, 
what kind of uh, what kind what kind of stuff do you think skeletons would be good for when it comes to crafting things, making things? I think um, they'd be really good in like the forge because they're not going to be affected by heat as much as a human would be. Like, mm. um, not in the sense that like they're not going to burn, but they're not going to need to step out and cool off because they're dead and whatever. Um, going along with that, especially with, uh, with forges, let's say that you've got like a really big forge and you've got like some of the most inhospitable environments so that you can have skeletons easily doing that. Yeah. Um, cheap and expensive, expensive flavor, absolutely. And something something I've got for mine is when it comes to when it comes to how sort of when it comes to the people in, in direct interactions with skeletons and death, um, something something I kind of I'm trying to build up to uh, naturally, like as as a culturally as a cultural development thing is having skeletons that so let's say for example that uh, you grow up and you grow up in like a necro in like a necromancer skeleton on dead society yeah so you're used to seeing skeletons you're used to seeing the dead you're used to all of this you have skeletons working the fields and these will be your ancestors these can be uh, dead family members you know and because they work in the fields this allows you to have the life you know that you've always wanted or a life that you can have, uh, a life that you wouldn't normally have if you were just working the fields every day. So you have, so you have that. When you die, you would also be tending the fields. So I feel, I feel like there is quite a legitimate thing in the sense wherein giving, like, uh, for a, for that kind of society to function, having people enabling people to pursue different careers or enabling people to pursue different things in life. So long as after they're dead, they can, you know, like if the relatives choose to, then when they're dead, they can become skeletons working because the dead's not really going to give a shit, are you? Because you're dead. Yeah. And 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 if you're and you can like sure it can be disrespectful to your remains, but your soul is not your body. Your soul is not your skeleton. Yeah, it depends on the law of the world too. Like in some law systems, it's like the the soul gets dragged back and like slammed in the skeleton and then has to toil away in agony forever or or it could be like you said where it's just like you know so it's always in agony it's it's never in it's never in bliss it's never pleasant is it it's it's no. always it, it's it's always horrible and agonizing and torturous and and it's it's and but and then if it take warhammer into account every second is agony and every yeah. second feels like an hour and like and and you and all of that. So or oh, every second feels like five years. So every year, so every second that passes is just an eternity of agonizing suffering. Yeah. And and because it's and because it's Warhammer, it's also going like five pages of detail and how much you suffer. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like um, why can't we just why can't we just have a chill guy in a skeleton doing some doing some honest work and just watching the plants grow? You can just um, just, no. just just in chill Grim it. Dawn in Grim Dawn it works that way. Uh, have, 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 have any of you played know. Grim Dawn? I got so far. Um, mm. If you get up to the point where the necromancers are and you talk to them, there's like a skeleton in there and um, he's like fully sentient. And the, mm. the, the agreement is, is that like when the necromancers die, they agree to serve the, the order forever as, as like dead things. And there's kind of like the moral problem of like is the guy enslaved or is he not enslaved kind of thing but he wasn't yeah. in agony like like is 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 he enslaved is he enslaved to the point where he agrees and saying he's not enslaved or yeah yeah um uh am i okay to move on to the next point yeah sure uh, working in hazardous environments now we touched upon this with mines and in uh, like uh smeltery places and such i was thinking working in hazardous environments, well, if you also have an environment that's a toxic miasma, an environment so... You can have an environment so dangerous that humans just cannot go there whatsoever, but it's required for certain stuff. You can have entire areas of the world populated only with undead, because the undead can't die. They're resistant, they're resistant to it because they're dead, you know? So you could literally have, like, some, uh, some luxury resources or some luxury trading uh, things being solely manufactured and worked by undead because humans just cannot thrive there yeah i'd say like any task which we use a robot for in real life can be done by a skeleton yeah the negative the negatives of this i feel uh would be that 
because um, depending on depending on you, you, you definitely need an intelligence. You need intelligent skeletons to run things because if you don't, things can go very very badly. Like there can be complications, equipment can get faulty, stuff like that. And if they're programmed to continue on and not to adapt to the situation, we can easily see how negatively that would go. For sure. Um. Uh, the cultural implications and views that would affect how people treat the dead. I think cremation would be something that's not done because you'd obviously need the remains to toil away for you. So mm. if you're in a necromancer society, you wouldn't be cremating things. Um, I do. Oh, like, sorry. Um, like undead, they, they basically carry illness. And and people knew that from like the beginning of of society that we would like bury the dead or uh, just you know get rid of them somehow like by burning something like that. Mm. So like, um, there would be a, a very large if a society like became necromantic, uh, I think there would be a, it would be very very difficult for people to adjust to that because you know undead are like the you know the souls of disease etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, in in the in the country I have, there's uh, because you, you've got a group of people like far up north that are basically used as a body farm in some aspects. Like there's 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 history to it, and there's a reason for it. But basically, every year there's a tithe to be paid in bodies, and the and these people have to pay the tithe. And if they don't pay the tithe, then they pay it with their lives. Wow. All for, all fun, 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 fun. But uh, something that they do to kind of avoid uh, being turned into undead, you know, slaves, is cremation. And this culturally travels down to uh, the south. And the reason for this, uh, and you'll see like the lower class people doing it, and uh, to escape undead. The reason for it is mainly dependent on the on uh, the king abusing his powers. Because the country in question has a history of uh, m of mentally insane kings that have fallen to madness through, you know, like uh, through s similar methods. Um, it's like, oh, f so and so went insane. I'm not. I'm different. I'm gonna. Oh shit! I'm insane now. Well, the fuck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, like, so when so when it comes so when it comes to having sort of like cremation, I feel like it would be dependent on the situation and the circumstances. If you've got a tyrant who's ruling. And who's making everything a living hell for people, and people are suffering, then people will definitely want to want to be sneaky about doing cremation. If if you've got people living happily, or even people that are living happily that don't want to be undead, they could still very sneakily do cremation. You know what I'd and do? And the thing, yeah, if people were cremating against my wishes, I'd drag their souls out of the afterlife and make them toil for me. Come here, little shit. You're doing this for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think. Would cremating completely ruin the bones? Because I feel like it can make some sort of fucking ash undead. Yeah, it, uh, it weakens them a lot, be, for sure. That would be interesting, but um, if you can make an ash undead, then you can make an undead out of everything. Like, why Fan not a soul into, like, a, like a stone or a, or a tree, etc., etc. Fair enough. Why not put a soul into a tree house? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Thanos snaps his fingers. Necromancers laughs. It, it's it's free real estate. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I wanted finally to raise up the point of animal skeletons, and mm -hmm. so I know that there are different like types of of animals that have like you know big and stronger skeletons. So. If it come and and sometimes you know the skeleton is the only thing remaining after an animal or something like that you know we have all of those uh, dinosaur skeletons obviously I know that they're not actual like bones yeah they're, because of fossilization yeah, yeah, yeah most of the time that they're, they're just you know fossils mm. but if we you know if we could animate like a skeleton of like of like a dead bear or something like that you know um, yeah. Those things, they would be way faster than actual bears, and they probably wouldn't have the issues of, like, human skeletons of them having uh, too little weight, essentially. Like, bear skeleton would certainly be more weighty, would be at least, like, human weight, and yeah. it would have this huge body with which to, you know, deal damage and all that, and push, and, and, and yeah. Um, I, do have, I do have a thing for that with monster utilization. Uh, do you want to go into that a little bit? Yeah. yeah, 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 that that was that was the point of like getting into this. 
Can I say one thing first? Uh, yeah, sure. You know that um, I may be wrong about this, but a lot of dinosaur bones that are actual bones and not fossils come from tar pits. So, you know, like the in the prehistory, mm. the, the dinosaur got caught in tar, submerges down, and is pretty well preserved in the tar. I think you could possibly get like a T-Rex skeleton out of that, if you're lucky. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, um, maybe that's one of my uh, things I was talking about. I feel like I said this before in the podcast, but basically using your necromancy to reach deep into the fucking ground and raise a certain type of skeleton. It could be just something from, like ancient, like from your world. That's it always like was an idea that fascinated me. Just be able to put, like have enough uh, necrotic strength to reach deep into the core world and see what walked the earth before you. There is there is a thing there is a thing with that kind of uh, desire in in World of Warcraft. Um, there's uh, there's a place in oh, fuck Dragon Blight, I think it's called, uh, and you've got a massive, absolutely massive dragon uh, called Galakrond, right? And he's, you can see like his bones are scattered like across the map, and you can see like they're on the on the massive, they're on the map and all that. And you, you've got burial sites where undead are basically trying to dig away at, at uh, the area to unearth the bones to then reanimate them. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, well, that can that can be that can be that can be absolutely used. But the only thing I could say against that is people would surely need knowledge of this beforehand, right? And like, if you're if you're finding bones in the ground, then absolutely, like you, you know, you can do whatever you want with them. Well, the thing is, when it comes to skeletons and whatnot, how would the reanimate... Like, the, depending on the world, how would the reanimation work? Does the necromancer have to have an idea as to how the bones look? Or do will they just naturally fit together in their own jigsaw way? I, I'd imagine he has to figure out the anatomy of the skeleton as well as probably how it moved. Because if you don't really know the movement of your skeleton, it's probably just going to work... It's going to try to do what you're imagining... But it'll probably, uh, if it's not toward its enemy, it'll, uh, original uh, anatomical way of just moving around, it'll probably just push the bones apart until eventually just snaps or breaks apart until it, if it's try again. Yep, exactly. Like, the, if the because the thing is that the bones are specifically shaped in a certain way, and the another like big issue in a way is that most creatures, I'm willing to say all. But I'm I'm not entirely certain. But like most creatures have like um, cartilage, and skeletons do not. So it's usually a bit of like an issue because a lot of bones um, basically are, are shaped in such a way as to include cartilage. So it's kind of like a skeleton is almost always not on its own will not be as efficient at moving as a fleshy person would be mm-hmm. due to that. Have you guys? Um, Sorry, go on. Yeah, uh, I was. I was going to say, can I just real quick um, go and get myself like something to eat? Because sure. I had I had something before I, I went out for my walk and before I came back, it's like uh, just only slightly exasperated. Yeah. Yep. It's um. So I, I'll just be back real quick. Okay. All right, I'm back. Hey, welcome back. Um, we've been going for an hour and a half already, so let's finalize. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe. So high can begin because he's got some good points. Um, uh, I'm not, I'm trying to think. Should we just go with the one or both? Um, whichever you think is most important or interesting. The one I'd like to go for more is about raising something originally holy. Mm. When whenever somebody raises something that's originally holy, uh, holy, it usually comes up as like or more like a um, like a damaged skeleton or. Something like that, maybe like even like an um, how to describe? Maybe like uh, uh just like a no more holy skeleton. I feel like that there's a missing step though. The f- your the fact is you're raising something that was raised holy. They used to have like prayers running through their veins, their very essence, on a daily basis, and like it's sorry about that. Um, is it right? It's all right. It, it, like uh, and even there's even ch- uh, 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 happenings where a paladin's getting buried and it makes the entire like surrounding area like a holy ground like it's hard for necromancer to work with. I feel like when you raise something holy, it's not just oh they become race. It's it's basically about 
battle between how much you can get rid of. Because they're, I'm pretty sure there's still remnants of, like, you know, their original divine light inside of them. When you raise them, you're, you're trying to overpower it. You're trying to erase and destroy it. There's chances that it's going to fail, but there's other chances where it's going to occur. Uh, I mean, the situation is basically is literally like uh, a disease against antibiotics. You're trying to see if you can win, and but you usually die off. If you win, though, you get a really goddamn lethal skeleton. When you raise something, uh, when you actually succeed in overpowering the uh, the real original thing, it's going to damage the skeleton. It's going to go through all of its bones, pretty much very its very essence. It's going to break the bones and reshape them into other things because it's it's still trying to raise it but it's going to break it in the process because it's, tr it's trying to remove every single remnant as possible P uh, and probably becoming even you know, like a much more potent kind of necromancy and probably um a creature who is much more closer to death ne uh, death magic than you are considering the fact that so off the very essence of divine to go and just get into this corpse um Something like uh, something to respond to that with. Uh, I did. I have done this uh, a few, quite a few stories with an, uh, with a friend of mine, wherein we've experimented with kind of like holy um, interactions with undead, and something a character of mine realized was he brought, but he had managed to bring back a uh, cleric or like a priest of some kind. Yeah, like somebody with that kind of magic. And he discovered that when this person that this person can this undead can use that magic, but when he uses it on undead, the resulting interaction causes the necrotic undead flesh to basically explode to become a grenade or a bomb. So they weaponized it and to, and made it so that this character would bless like uh, when when say skeletons or zombies get into close range, select ones would be blessed or holy magic would be applied to them in a beneficial way. And the resulting explosion would deal significant damage. Along along with this, what you can easily do, like, although this is largely depends on the setting, but if 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 holy and unholy are two sides of the coin, yeah, and why not just have it where you can have a uh, a undead doing holy magic, or if you have somebody that was holy, what if when they're made into undead? They're equally unholy, so they're just as powerful, but just flipped over. It also depends okay. a lot on the mor the morality of necromancy in your setting. Like, if you mm. don't have holy and unholy as concepts, then none of this even occurs. Oh, for yeah. mine, for mine, it's more a very a very opinionated. I'd say that it probably would uh, just go and flip over because you're basically trying to replace what was originally flowing inside of it. Mm. But well, um, that depends, uh, because I, you, if you have something like, let's say, you know, let's assume that like holy is like fire and undeath and and like dark arts are like water, then it's difficult to light something that was wet on fire. Like you first have to essentially, essentially, um, like dry it up and then light it on fire. So I, I don't think it would be a very, very strong skeleton because you're not just replacing it. You're not just flipping it. You're literally going all the way through the spectrum to the other way. Mm. I think yeah, it... there's going to be, I, I imagine there's going to be a lot of uh, failed attempts or at least yeah, it's yeah. going to take you a while to actually reach the point of getting that um, uh, death magic um, yeah. uh, skeleton. And you could potentially get like a partially um, independent skeleton or something like that, because like there's still like a trace of it that can maybe make it somehow uh, have free will, separate from from your magic. So, like it's very dangerous, I think. To it's be... gonna be very dangerous, but if it's completed, it'd be very rewarding at the same time, though. Yes. I'd also imagine that it would also like some of the instances it would uh their their uh, faith was weaker than others and it would just create like a uh, some something like a half breed between uh, uh necromancy and holy magic something that's uh I'm not sure how to describe it, describe it. it's basically something we wouldn't really know, remember think about or seen like a uh, like an uh, like oh like an unexpected effect like um. Uh, you see, like this kind of like a death uh, skeleton walking up to you. He starts healing you. Thinking, oh, okay, that's cool. In reality, he's not healing you. You just don't feel the pain anymore. 
he's literally melting the flesh off your bones. You just can't feel it. <laughs> oh, damn. Like, produce unexpected effects and like that, that you would think is supposed to be work, but it's just like bastardization of what it's supposed to do. Mm. Yeah, like, for example, uh, you may realize that um, vials and jars with uh, with sulfuric acid have no bottom. If you put your hand into it, you're not going to reach your bottom. Wow. Uh, wise, wise words with seventh. <laughs> Science with seventh. Yeah. They, they may seem to have a bottom from the outside, but like if you put your, your hand into them, they don't have a bottom. How quickly are you putting your hand in? Because, I mean, if you're doing it slowly, then yeah. But, I mean, if you're sticking it straight into the bottom... Then. Punch it. See what happens. <laughs> punch, yeah, punch the button. <laughs> I welcome you to try. I I would certainly like to see that. That's actually a good point. Would acid um... melt the bone? Yes. Would it? I was gonna, when it comes to magic, would it be used? Would it be good to use? Um, I remember in science class we put bones in some kind of solution. And it made the bones all bendy and floppy. Yep. But it oh took my. it took a long time. Whatever it was, like we left it overnight or something. So uh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It's, but it was. Okay, it's not immediate action. I'm trying to think with acid. You can probably just, like try to figure like way to store it inside of your undead. Maybe like a skeleton or just like maybe something that you used to like look a dragon. Try to reanimate its kind of sacks and just store the liquid inside of there. And so when the skeletons feel like it, they can spray it, or when they die, it explodes, or when, you know, just dragon breathes, it breathes out those acid. That could be interesting. But yeah, let's let's slowly wrap it up, eh? Yeah, we've got to get on to seventh game. Yes. All right. So is there any last point that desperately has to be addressed? Um, I mean, there's a little bit more for skeleton usage in the necromancer society. This bone harvesting, monster utilizer. Like, I mean, this can always be uh, done another time. Right? Yeah. I mean, it could always, it, it can always be sort of like um, the points can always be made in the description of the video. So, why don't we yeah. take one of these topics, like the necromancer society or whatever, and make that its whole own podcast, and we'll yeah. really go into yeah. it there. That's, that's, uh, that's, yeah. a, that's an entire talk, like a necromancer society or colony. So, yeah. Mm. Alright yeah, everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you guys had fun making this podcast. Thank you very oh, much for having good. us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having us and thanks to the audience for watching. Yeah. All right. And and for all the fun and uh, lols that we was having all throughout. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, see you guys. See ya. See ya. See you. <laughs>